are to South Africa. And Oscar Pistorius, the world's most famous Paralympian, was jailed in 2014 after he shot his model girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp, multiple times through a closed bathroom door. Pistorius has always maintained his innocence and claimed he thought Reva was an intruder. But the disgraced sports star was convicted of her murder and jailed. Today, the athlete is once again making a bid for freedom after serving half of his time. It is a bitter blow for Reva's family, whose world was torn apart after the murder of their beautiful daughter. Well, joining us now is Tanya Cohen, lawyer and spokesperson for Reva's mother, June Steenkamp. Uh, Tanya, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning. How, how are the family feeling about uh, today and the hearing today? Good morning and thank you for having me. So obviously June is still in mourning, as you would know, uh, she lost her husband Barry in September this year. She's also had other losses, two of her personal friends dying in the past 12 months. And this is the second bid for Oscar's parole in the space of one year, the earlier one being in March. And then of course, I would have celebrated Riva's 40th birthday this year. So it's a difficult time for June. She does, however, accept that parole is part of the African legal system and Oscar Pasturis, like anybody else or any other offender, is entitled to be considered for placement on parole once he has served his minimum required sentence. Will June be in court uh, today? How does she feel about seeing Oscar Pastorius again? So it's not a courtroom, it's it's basically an office, you could say, mm. at the premises of the prison property that the parole board convenes at. So June has decided it's not in her best interest to be there this morning. She is therefore not present and um, contrary to the previous time, she just doesn't see her way clear to face Oscar Pistorius. And, uh, but she has prepared a written statement, a victim impact statement, that's being read to the parole board probably as we speak by Advocate Anadi T.R. Kaufmeyer. And um, our very good friend, June's very good friend, Rob Matthews, who is the father of Lee Matthews, who was tragically killed a number of years ago, and also going through a parole process at the moment, he will be reading June's victim impact statement to the press this Ta morning. Tanya, what can you tell us about that victim impact mm. statement? So the victim impact statement is the statement by a victim. And in this case, June is the victim, her being the surviving parent of, of Reva. So the victim impact statement tells the parole board about the emotional, the physical, the financial effect that the death of Reva has had on June. And then, of course, in the statement, June will give her view and opinions on her on Oscar Pistorius, you know, the profile that you want the parole board to consider. And, and just in terms of, of what has transpired, so he was initially convicted of culpable homicide. It was then upgraded to murder. He was sentenced to 13 years, five months in prison. Then the Court of Appeal, that's the Supreme Court, ruled in 2017 he should serve 15 years in, in prison. Just, just in terms of, of uh, her mother, ha has he showed any remorse at all towards the family? What, has there been any communication at all? So it's a very good question. The Supreme Court of Appeal actually said that they didn't think he had proper remorse. They stated that his version of what happened on that evening, they still didn't understand exactly what happened. So they don't believe, and June doesn't believe, that Oscar Pistorius is rehabilitated because she still doesn't believe his version. So, you know, it's 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 a difficult... Uh, the parole has a difficult... Um, a decision to make this morning, they must determine whether they do think that he is remorseful, that he is rehabilitated and the, that he no longer poses a danger to society. But as a victim, I think it's very important for the victim to be part of the process because it also form, forms, to a huge extent, a part of their healing process. And, and just in terms of, of the family, it, I mean, obviously, it will just be a, an incredibly difficult day. What, what are they hoping will be, I suppose, the best outcome for them and for the family? 
That's a very difficult question because I've always held the view that it's my job as an attorney and friend to prepare my clients that the offender will be released. So it's a long-term process. June does accept that at some point in time, Oscar will be released from prison. So she is emotionally prepared for that. After Reva's death, the family set up the Reva Steen Camp Foundation. What can you tell us about the work of the foundation in the, what, nine, ten years since? Yes, we're very proud of the foundation. We believe that there's such a huge demand for foundations to step up to the plate because, as you know, tomorrow is the start of the 16 days of activism against abuse. What we do is we educate, we assist um, victims with uh, obtaining protection orders, and we award a yearly law bursary um, to a final year law student. One of the, our first bursary recipient, in fact, um, is now a prosecutor at the state, and she's a co-trustee, I'm sorry, trustee and co-CEO of the foundation. So we believe that we are making a huge difference in being a voice for the victims of abuse. And I suppose in some ways, um, out of such terrible tragedy comes some glimmer of hope that you can turn this in into something good. Yes, and that is exactly what, what, what keeps June going. The, the, the thought that she's being Reva's voice, you must remember that Reva did this speaking up against abuse during her lifetime. So it's, it's, it's for June, it's, it's an opportunity to ensure that she takes the baton from Reva and that Reva's memory lives on. Uh, and that parole hearing underway uh, right now as we speak at Tanya, could we see Oscar Pistorius freed today? Highly unlikely. The, the Department of Correctional Services have certain parole policies for the release of offenders on parole. And in terms of that policy, they are not allowed to free an offender within 30 days of having made the decision. And the reason for that is that the offender must undergo compulsory preemptive programs. They must ensure that his support system is in place and so forth. So mm -hmm. in terms of their own policies, not likely with 30 days. Okay. Uh, Tanya Cohen, thank you very much indeed for talking to us here today. Still to come.